This is a quick tutorial showing one way to uh, overlay a model onto a, a background image and, and render it. Um, I've got this sad excuse for a solar panel uh, modeled and uh, note that it's on the uh, ground here. It's a z equals zero. This is important because later we're going to use a uh, an infinite plane or a, a, a Thea floor uh, to catch the shadows and um, things get messed up if this is not on the um, at z equals zero. Um, so I've got this photograph and what I want to show is what this solar panel is going to look like sitting in this field but it's kind of similar to to uh, ca uh, photo matching but in this case we, we don't have any references to, to, to photo match to and so the scale is going to be completely arbitrary so it's really uh, a matter of using SketchUp to kind of rotate and uh, scale, uh, zoom and the camera to, to make this thing look right. That's about all you can do. So here, here's how to set it up. Um, first of all, in Thea, uh, we come to the um, environment and this tab here, this is the image-based lighting, we're just going to use the background and we want to choose the photo. There it is. And one one trick is you've got to set this to fit. Okay, so that's going to fit the um, uh, the camera field of field of view. That is the Thea camera field of view. So what you need to also do is in the render settings set this resolution to SketchUp window, and I'll try to explain later when we when we get there. Uh, but th this this is important so that you can have a uh, an image to look at while you're modeling and also moving the model around. But then you have the same image appear when you're actually rendering it. Go, it'll become clear hopefully. Okay, and then uh, in the model info, no, not the model info. We got to go to the um, here are the styles and this icon here on the edit this and it's the watermark. We're going to add a watermark um, even though it's not going to be used as a watermark. So add a watermark and you're going to use the same image. Now I forgot to mention it's very good idea to have a look at the SketchUp area which is either this or if you hide the tool panel, it's this big thing. You kind of want your photo aspect ratio to be similar to, to this. Okay, now we're going to add this watermark. Okay, same image. Okay, and it's going to go take you through these little steps here. You want to set it as a background. Okay, now look at these gray bars over here on the left and the right. This is not being stretched yet. Um, so go next. Uh, this you can leave everything is just um, the you want the image to be a hundred percent opacity and then on next and here's the here's the thing it's stretched to fit the screen and you've got this lock x aspect ratio I think that's the default that means it's going to stretch it until the f the first like in this case it's the vertical uh, dimension which is going to max out and it's going to leave these bars over here but you don't want to lock the as aspect ratio because it's hard to get Thea render to do the same thing as what we're seeing here uh, so trust me unlock the aspect ratios you could see that the image stretched a little bit but because the aspect ratio is very close to the SketchUp screen it didn't stretch much and I'm not too worried about it so then you say finish okay um, and until I think of the other thing that's about all you need to do here now you can have it render do a little practice render here just to see if everything is alright now you see it didn't look like the background image changed but actually when I stop the render, what's being displayed on the background right here is the watermark. 
when I hit this, what's th this image is actually coming from the image-based lighting, the background that we set up in, in, in Thea Render. And that's why you go through this thing about stretching, getting rid of the aspect ratio, because if you don't, then you get little differences. You, you'll, you'll clearly see it. Um, in fact, I could even see I'll just lock the aspect ratio. Now I'm going to stop the render. And you see, now we've got this slightly smaller but correct aspect ratio, um, but it's not matching the render. And you see, so you're going to be trying to, depending on the, the job, um, carefully positioning this object. Um, and you, you've, like I want to make it right next to that pole, right, right there. But if you don't get this right, then when you render it, you see it stretched it and it's not next to that pole. So uh, you've got to have over here on the watermark, we're going to take that aspect ratio off. All right. So that's about it. Now, um, yep. Now, okay, we can, um, it doesn't look so great right now, but when it's, when it's rendering, it's because there's no shadows. So the other thing we got to do is in the environment, uh, turn on the ground plane. Okay, that's what this is. And that's about it. Now, also, you probably want to turn on this little widget here because now if we render it, you see the uh, ground plane is catching the shadow from this thing. Um, but right now, uh, the I want it, it's using the SketchUp sun and things. So we want to have control over the sun. So you have to click uh, over here on the environment on the sun sun and ground. You want to click the manual sun, but you and you also have to uncheck use SketchUp sun position. Now with this little widget here displayed, we have control over the, the shadow. So you can't see uh, that might be a shadow there, but I'll just click around here until I'm kind of happy with the, the shadow location. Okay, that's not too bad. Now, now we want the uh, to to position the object. So we want it to look kind of real. I know that this thing is about oh two meters tall on that that dimension. I know that pole is probably four or five. So it's really not too bad right now. But to change the size of the thing. You, you zoom out. Now this is just moving the camera. You are not, we're not going, taking the model and moving it, um, or, or, or actually rotating the model. If we want to rotate the model, we, we use, I, I'm using the left uh, side mouse button, which is my, my rotate the camera thing. Because what I want to do is I want to show this thing looking at that in that direction because that this is actually looking south this photograph so so I'm zooming in I'm making it bigger I'm I'm shift uh, I'm you know panning around uh, and I'm positioning this thing I'm not rotating the object I'm just rotating the camera and moving the camera forward and backward until this thing looks about right and also that it's facing the kind of the direction I want and now with this I want to come over here and since the sun is going to be coming from the south in this case, I'm just kind of trial and erroring around until I get some sort of uh, reasonable shadow. Okay, I'm going to leave it at, leave it at that. And it's kind of nice since it's kind of an overcast day uh, to add uh, some soft shadow. And I know already that about five is going to just kind of blur that shadow out a little bit. Now, and this is all, it's, it's rendering right now, so if I stop the render, you see, um, this, this is kind of the SketchUp version of it, and then rendering is there. And so that's a quick, a quick and dirty way to uh, kind of set an object in, in the context of a, a photograph when, when you don't have any other data to do any proper photo matching with. I'm just going to pause this. Okay, I thought I would also mention 
sometimes the photograph is is dark or 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 too light and you know you can do some adjustments over here by changing the iso uh and the, or the shutter speed so that it's a little bit brighter we do have some control over what uh, the render is going to do to this background image um, by by way of this. So I, I think that's about it. I'm going to stop this now.